Hello, my name is Dr. Emma Ryan, and I'd like to offer you a very warm welcome to our session in which we're going to explore the discipline of criminology at Deakin University. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the meaning of place and in doing so acknowledge the traditional owners of the uh, vast amount of lands on which we do our business today, virtually uh, gathered. I'm coming to you from the land of the Bunurong people, and I would like to acknowledge their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that this land always was, still is, and always will be Aboriginal land. In our session, we're going to explore what criminology is. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of studying criminology and what makes criminology at Deakin a real standout choice. We'll talk about some of uh, the career and uh, our graduate outcomes, talk about how the course is constructed, how you can enter um, the course through various pathways, and briefly introduce you to our Indigenous and regional access schemes and give you a little bit of detail about how to apply. And then when the session is finished, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to ask uh, questions of a wonderful panel of my colleagues um, that we've put together to uh, help you out. So thanks for being here. Uh, strap in, here we go. So criminology is a discipline that's represented in lots of different ways, uh, particularly through the media. Criminology is not about profiling. It's more about understanding the social and individual causes of crime. It focuses in on the historical dimensions of understanding and responding to crime and learning the lessons from the past to produce better crime-focused policy for the future. Crime is not always obvious. Lots of crime is hidden. If we think about the different types of crime that can occur, there are some types that are responded to much more positively and enthusiastically than others. So in our degree, we consider traditional crime types, such as street crime, uh, crime in the home, uh, manslaughter, murder, victimisation, but we also step into the space of more uh, overt and hidden kinds of crime, uh, environmental crime, white collar crime, state crime, and not to mention the important emerging crime type, cyber crime. The units that we present in this degree really hope, help students hone their skills around understanding the most effective responses to crime and understanding that certain harmful behaviours require specific responses in order for the community to benefit, uh, feel safer and be at less risk of victimisation. We also have an emphasis on accountability in our degree as without proper accountability of justice systems, as well as private organisations and citizens, uh, then crime is very, very likely to rise. So we think about the realities of crime and not the kind of myths and media representations, which we will help you um, explore, explode and understand focusing in on what are the really harmful crime types, what kinds of crime impact people the most and what kinds of crime types there is a lot more work to be done around in the future in order to prevent or at least reduce the harm related to them. So if you're a person who's really passionate about making an impact, really passionate about improving society and particularly the issue of social justice, then criminology is really for you. If you want a more complete understanding of why crime 
and the harms associated with crime occur and what the best things are to do about them, then Deakin is the place to study. We are interested in our students developing really practical skills that can make an impact uh, out there in the real world. And beyond that, the skills that you'll gain through a criminology degree are highly transferable. You may end up in a role that's directly related to criminal justice, but the analytical and critical insights that you'll gain through the degree uh, are also extremely attractive to a wide range of employers. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. The Bachelor of Criminology was the first uh, degree of its type to be established in Australia. Uh, we have designed our curriculum uh, in collaboration with a wide range of industry partners over the years. And I'll also talk a little bit more about that. This ensures that our unit content and particularly our assessment tasks are reflecting the, the real needs of industry and equipping students with the skills that um, the employment market is really looking for. We offer work integrated learning opportunities uh, as an elective aspect of the criminology degree, um, which will give students who are really keen to get out and start to build their CV an opportunity to practice their skills in the real world. Our staff are highly trained. Many of us have worked in industry and we are, uh, many of us, very highly respected researchers in the field as well. So in terms of the staff at Deakin, you'll be in very good and well experienced hands. Careers in criminology are very broad. There's a whole range of different uh, industries uh, and sectors that you could uh, transfer your skills into. Of course, policing is a popular choice with many of our students, and that's at both the state and federal level, as well as uh, law enforcement bodies beyond policing, of which um, there are many. Intelligence agencies in particular are um, uh, strong employers of our student cohort. Government departments such as the community, uh, the Department of um, Community Justice and Safety here in Victoria and others interstate are also um, spaces where the skills that our degree will offer you can be put into uh, great practice. There are roles in courts, particularly in community corrections uh, and also in prisons, uh, developing programs for offenders, working directly with offenders is uh, an option for criminology graduates. Crime prevention is also um, highly sought after uh, skill base by um, many sectors of the community, including government of all levels, particularly local governments, but also in the private sector. Um, private security options, uh, working in the community legal sector might be another option. This is just a snapshot of some of the types of careers that will lie before you after you graduate with a Bachelor of Criminology. This slide shows you some of our industry partners uh, who sit on our advisory board and who also participate with our staff in a range of um, really important research projects. Again, this is just a snapshot, um, but it gives you an idea of the types of organisations that assist us to build our content and to review our assessment tasks, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure that they're reflecting best real world practice and that they remain really contemporary. We're really thankful to our partners and we really couldn't um, deliver the quality of our program without them. We're always um, reaching out to um, broader organisations also. So this is just gives you a flavour of the types of um, organisations that we collaborate with to build our fabulous Bachelor of Criminology. Our degree really plan, uh, is aimed at helping you develop the skills that you will need to get your dream job. 
through the work integrated learning opportunities that I mentioned earlier, um, students have an opportunity to begin to build a resume. We have a fantastic uh, team at Deakin that assists students to build resumes and to understand what strong job applications look like. We're always growing um, our employer networks, as I mentioned before, and several times a year, Deakin holds special events where we invite these networks representatives uh, and our students to come together to talk about options and opportunities for the future. We have a range of career success workshops and uh, fantastically experienced career coaches available too. So as there's a strong emphasis on making sure that you not only thoroughly enjoy your time with us at Deakin University, but that once you graduate, you can get out into the world and start kicking goals straight off the bat. This slide gives you a very broad um, overview of our course structure. Um, basically, to complete a Bachelor of Criminology, you'll need to complete six core units, and then you will choose six other units from the electives that you see here at the bottom of the slide. The core units are the first two first year student uh, units where we introduce um, criminology as a discipline and also um, key issues in the criminal justice system itself. In second year, we examine uh, current issues in criminology as well as criminology theory as core units. And in the third year, there's an international and comparative unit and a research-based unit. Um, beyond that, you can choose six of those electives, as I mentioned, and then you have the option to choose 12 um, units from our arts degree suite. This gives you the opportunity to build a, a degree that is highly tailored to your own interests. You can mix your 12 credit points, 12 units of criminology study with a language, with politics, with history, with sociology, uh, with a range of units um, that once you choose Deakin and begin your enrolment, period, our student advisors will be there um, to help you along the way to really design that um, custom made course that suits your interests specifically. Um, it's a great way to be able to ensure that you enjoy your experience studying criminology as much as is possible. This is a sample course map. When students start out at Deakin, we really encourage them to build a course map to ensure that you are ticking all the boxes in terms of the right number of core units, the right number of criminology electives, and the right number of electives from beyond the criminology suite. It's important to do this planning so that you can make sure that you, um, as I mentioned, complete all of the course rules and that you have a plan that will um, be timed effectively to allow you to not have to overload or underload um, your studies. You can study part-time, of course, and this course map is um, a full-time course map. You might also enter in trimester one or trimester two, or indeed in trimester three in criminology. Deakin, of course, has the trimester system which has the great benefit of allowing you to fast track your degree. Um, and by choosing, mapping your course correctly, you can actually um, complete the Bachelor of Criminology in two and a half years uh, if you study across all three trimesters. So that's also an added bonus. Um, the Work Integrated Learning Electives are a great opportunity, as I've mentioned, for our students who've had some really brilliant experiences. Here's one of our students on placement with Victoria Police recently. We also have a strong partnership with um, Community Corrections in Victoria, where a growing number of our students are having a fabulous time getting some work experience, and several of them now have actually gained full-time employment in that sector, which I think is really brilliant because that is a space where you have a whole lot of opportunity to really make an impact on people's lives. 
Uh, we also have placement opportunities in youth justice in the Department of Justice and Community Safety with a number of private sector organisations with local councils and students are um, warmly encouraged to seek out opportunities for work integrated learning of their own um, and Deacon will then partner with that organisation um, to get that work integrated learning unit off the ground. So that's something to bear in mind uh, right from the beginning. Students who've undertaken these work integrated learning electives um, have benefited immensely. And as I've mentioned, quite a number of them have gone on to gain full-time employment with those organisations, which is great. I mentioned at the beginning that there is a number of double degrees that combine with criminology. And this slide gives you a snapshot of what they are. You can undertake a Bachelor of Forensic Science and Bachelor of Criminology, noting that that's offered at Warren Ponds uh, only, because that's where we have our forensic facilities that support the forensic science degree. You could also think about enrolling in the Bachelor of Criminology, Bachelor of Cyber Security, which is um, one of the only uh, courses of its kind at present and is producing graduates that are filling a rather urgent need uh, out there in the community and particularly in government sectors uh, where the skills to be able to combat cybercrime, which is, as I've mentioned, a really pressing uh, issue at present, um, are desperately needed. So do think about that one. Also, of course, a Bachelor of Criminology combined with a Bachelor of Law, fantastic option uh, for law students to take. And finally, the Bachelor of Criminology, Bachelor of Psychological Science, which as you can understand is also a fantastic combination and produces graduates who uh, have uh, the skills and the knowledge that they need to work directly with offenders and make a real difference in the lives of people impacted by crime. There's a number of um, pathways to enter the Bachelor of Criminology. If you don't quite meet the entry requirements at the end of VCE or in any other way, then the Associate Degree of Arts guarantees you a pathway and gives you credit towards your first year of study. So have a think about that. Uh, if you don't quite get the uh, ATAR that you require as displayed on this uh, slide here, bearing in mind that these are based uh, on uh, this year's figures of next year, maybe slightly different, but wouldn't be terribly much different. But if you don't meet those ATARs, there's still a way to come and study with us through the Associate Degree of Arts which will be talked about more in the arts presentation. So you can join in uh, and get all the details about that one. We also have uh, options for VCE students to come along and study with us through our Deakin Accelerate program. I've taught a number of Accelerate students through my first year teaching, and it is an absolute joy. The students thoroughly enjoy studying alongside university students, lifting their learning up to that slightly um, higher level. So if you're a high performing year 11 student, think about undertaking Deacon Accelerate in your VCE year. You can find more information about the Accelerate program uh, at that link, deacon.edu.au slash accelerate. And here is Nicholas Allen, who was one of our um, top performing fabulous um, Accelerate students from 2019. He did a great job uh, and it was, it's an absolute pleasure to have the Year 12s on board with us. We also offer an Indigenous access uh, scheme because, as the slide says, we know that you're more than your ATAR and your academic results. And we really encourage um, Indigenous students to come and study with us, particularly in the discipline of criminology, which uh, in Australia is uh, one of the key aims of our discipline is to help impact the experiences of the justice system for Indigenous people uh, as victims of crime, uh, as offenders, and as a community which 
uh, often features in crime statistics in ways that we would really like to be able to impact. We cannot do that unless we have Indigenous students carrying criminology and other, but particularly criminology degrees. So the Bachelor of Criminology is one of the courses that we offer through our Indigenous Access Scheme. Uh, and if you are an Indigenous um, student looking at Deakin, then please do um, visit deakinedu.au, study, find a course, Indigenous Access Scheme for some more details. We also offer a range of scholarships and other options for financial support um, at Deakin. And you can find details um, of that uh, at this link, deakin.edu.au, study, fees and scholarships. Uh, there's a number of government loan schemes, as I mentioned, and this link gives you all the details that you need to know about how you can get uh, to that goal that you've got in mind. This slide gives you um, the basic details of how to apply for a Bachelor of Criminology should you be thinking of doing so. Of course, for 2023, you can make your application uh, via VTAC. And for non-school leavers, there's uh, a trimester three intake, as I mentioned, uh, which closes at the end of October. And for a trimester one intake, um, that needs to be in by late February. Apply.deacon.edu.au, direct applications is the place to look at. And there's a phone number and also a web address there that you can have a look at if you are thinking Deacon might be the place for you. Some of you might be coming to us um, from international locations. So this slide gives you um, the details that you need if you are an international student. You must meet that English language um, requirement as outlined on the slide. Um, and there is a range of academic entry uh, requirements as well. I would strongly encourage you, if you are an international student, to attend the Apply to Deakin as an international student session, or to have a look at the recording since all these sessions will be available. Um, so please do take the time to have a look at the details um, required because once again, our international students bring a whole range of perspectives and experiences to our classrooms, which we highly, highly value. International study experts are available all day today in the web chat. So by clicking on that yellow speech bubble icon at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, um, you can uh, ask direct questions and there'll be an expert standing by to help you. And as I mentioned, the following information sessions will be useful also apply to Deakin as an international student, fees and scholarships for international students and international student life at Deakin. So thank you so much for your interest. Thank you for joining me today, just for dipping our toes in the water of what criminology at Deakin looks like. There will be a live Q&A session coming up next. So you can ask myself uh, and my fellow panellists, any questions that you've got, do take the time to explore the resources on the page that you're looking at here. And of course, across the virtual open day website. Um, chat to our experts on the web chat at any time. So the live Q&A session will go for um, about half an hour, I think, 45 minutes. And then you can uh, any questions pop into your mind after that, you can hop onto that web chat. There's a number of student stories there at deacon.edu.au arts ed stories. Criminology sits within the Faculty of Arts and Education, and we refer to that as arts ed. You can join us on campus also at our open day in August, where you can have a look at the campus, um, speak to us in person, uh, and get the 
feel of Deakin University, which is so welcoming and warm. And we really look forward to seeing you down the track. Thanks so much for listening. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this Q&A session for the Bachelor of Criminology. It's great to have you all here. My name is Dr. Emma Ryan. I'm the course director of the Bachelor of Criminology or the B-Crim as we call it at Deakin. And I'm joined by some wonderful colleagues and some beautiful students of ours today. Um, start off by introducing Dr. Ian Warren. Hi, Ian, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Ian's been in our program for a long, long time and is an absolute font of wisdom about um, the B cream, where it can take you and what it's like to study it. So that's great. I always have Millie here with us and Millie ex is just is about to graduate at the end of uh, this year, which, which is really exciting. Um, Millie's done a lot of great work with us around sharing her knowledge and wisdom with other students and prospective students in particular. And Millie's doing a double degree in B Crim and B Law. So um, she's got, you know, lots of experience and wisdom about what it's like to study the course. I've also got Dr. Dr. Mark Wood here with us. Welcome, Mark. Um, Mark uh, is teaches into our program. He'll be teaching the Criminology Theory Unit next trimester. Um, Mark also has lots of uh, teaching experience, not just at Deakin, but also at a couple of other institutions. So we really welcome his input today. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Justin, who is currently in the middle of his honours degree with us. So Justin also did a double degree in uh, B-Crim and Bachelor of Psychology. Uh, and now he's doing an honours year to cap it all off. So Justin and Millie bring us those great student perspectives and Ian and Mark and myself can sort of speak from a, a staff point of view. So hopefully we have all the brain trust in the room that we need to answer any questions that you might have for us, which of course is the, the point of our time together this afternoon. If you do have a question, you can just type it into that um, Q&A section in the question panel on this page and we'll do our best to answer all your questions. But if you do ask a question during the session that isn't answered, just know that our um, export, expert support team will be, still be available on web chat uh, all day to assist you. So if something pops into your head after the session, you can still dive in there. We, they can answer um, really specific questions like, um, you know, questions around international student admissions, or queries about fees and little ticky tackies. And so at the bottom right hand corner, of the screen, you'll see a, a yellow, little yellow chat now icon, and you can click on that um, once the session is finished to connect with the team who can answer your questions. So let's dive in and get started. Um, there's a great question first up, which is in a double degree and in criminology and psychological science, what careers does this open up? And of course, careers are always at the forefront of students' minds when they're choosing what course to enrol in. And at Deakin, our B Crim B Psych is a particularly um, practical and applied degree. There is uh, a number of career opportunities for students with that type of degree, uh, particularly around working with offenders. So working within the prison system itself, potentially working in community corrections, which it's important to you know, know uh, there's a, a vastly larger number of offenders who go through community corrections rather than imprisonment. And that's something that kind of, I think criminology as a discipline tries to support as much as it, it can because there are a few issues with imprisoning people at the rates that we currently are. So there's a, a lot of very important roles there around uh, dealing with uh, people who are um, sentenced by the courts, either to a community-based order of some sort, 
or a period of imprisonment. But obviously there are a lot of supports, programs, behavioural change, um, incentivising people to engage in what we call desistance, which is a person's capacity to, you know, shift their lives around so that they can fall out of the criminal justice net instead of say, uh, staying there. But with a B crim B psych, you would also think much more broadly than that kind of face-to-face -face interactions, lots of roles in policy, lots of roles in government, lots of roles in uh, non-government organisations, also the private sector and obviously the health sector as well. Understanding the drivers um, of deviant uh, and criminal behaviours is a really important skill for any psychologist to have, I think. So whether you sort of funnel yourself directly into criminal justice or whether you want to think more broadly about how to use your knowledge from criminal criminology, which you know will give you a lot of insights into how the criminal justice system works, it may well be that you are helping clients that you treat stay out of the criminal justice system in the first place. So broad range of options where you can have a real impact with that kind of double degree. There's another question here, which I might shoot to you, Ian, which is, are there any practical components with this degree, like an internship program? Thank you, Emma. Um, the BCRIM offers um, several core units that are, are mandatory as part of the degree. Um, and none of those core units at the moment involve an internship program. So all of the internship options are actually electives that you choose. Now, an internship can be sometimes a little bit complicated to set up because you need to have some sort of link with a relevant uh, criminal justice industry. And some industries um, might not actually permit an internship. So, for example, we've had several students in the past that have wanted to do an internship with ASIO, which is the um, Australian Security Intelligence Organisation. But um, it, it's almost impossible to do a, a, an internship with an organisation such as that because of security clearances and national security concerns and so forth. So um, rather than sort of setting up your own sort of ideas about what an internship should be, it's a really good idea to talk with someone like Emma, who's the, the criminology course director, who also um, has a lot to do with the work integrated learning program that we have within criminology and at, at Deakin more broadly, but to also talk with other staff who might be able to make suggestions about what is a viable internship opportunity um, that can be credited to your degree. The real issue with an internship is to ensure that um, it's linked in with one of the um, arts faculties uh, internship units. And then alongside the internship process, which again, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, you, you organize this through criminology staff to, to get that up and running. But alongside that, we also have two dedicated elective units within criminology that, that discuss issues related to careers in criminology. So if an internship um, is not possible for whatever reason, um, you still get a lot of exposure to, to potential career pathways through the, the criminology careers units. Again, those are elective units rather than, than compulsory units because the compulsory units have been set up in a way to give you the nuts and bolts knowledge about what criminology is. And then the electives give you that sort of more diverse knowledge about, about how to pursue employment pathways and so forth. So in, in a nutshell, um, yes, we do have in internship opportunities. We, uh, in fact, Justin um, was part of an internship that, that we uh, hosted at a, a local legal centre. Um, and maybe I might uh, throw over to Justin to, to expand on that issue, because uh, I, I think the internship was not only a, a challenging one during COVID, but a potentially rewarding one as well. So I might get Justin to speak to that in terms of the practical uh, dimensions. Yeah, thanks, Ian. So 
Yeah, in in short, uh, I was doing the internship at the Barwon Community Legal Centre, which is an interesting mix because in my degree, I'm doing psych and criminology, so I'm not actually doing anything law related. But uh, so our specifically was looking into elder abuse and civil law issues regarding elder abuse in the people in the Bowen community region. And um, I think it was really rewarding if someone, if, if you're interested in research of any type to get involved in stuff like this, because it was just a great way to see the practical way that research ran and how there are different obstacles which come up and can slow down the research and things can get hard at some times and there's there's things like ethical considerations which you need to go through but it was a it was a brilliant rewarding experience to get to talk to people I got to talk to lawyers in the center who I never would have got the opportunity to and you get to sort of branch out that network and that's a big thing with the internship as well as you start networking with people in the professional industry and that could lead to job opportunities from then so I couldn't recommend doing an internship any hot any more highly. Um, it's definitely an opportunity that you'd want to take if it comes up. Yeah, no, thanks, Justin. And yes, I know. So Justin's internship has segued into his honours project, which has you know worked really well. Mostly, <laughs> a few little barriers that we've hit along the way, but that's all the fun and games of criminological research. But um, we also have some pretty strong relationships with um, Community Corrections Victoria. So we've got a fairly a growing number of students who've done internships and also actually gained ongoing employment. Uh, sometimes part-time, sometimes full-time in the regions in particular, but also um, in the city. Uh, also uh, youth law. Uh, youth law has taken on some of our students, local councils, Victoria Police. We have a wide range of kind of ongoing relationships, but as Ian mentions, um, there's also uh, often opportunities that staff can identify really amazing opportunities um, for graduates who, you know, just want to start to build their CV, build up that experience, put their toe in the water and really learn about the challenges that Justin's mentioned, which, you know, is something that a criminology graduate needs to be um, prepared for. Um, as Sylvia has asked, would a double degree in criminology and forensics open up more options, which would be more beneficial? Now, I'm assuming you mean a single degree or a double degree in that question. And I think, look, I'll take this one because it certainly might open up um, broader opportunities to do a double degree. And obviously in forensics, it's a very specialised area very interesting and exciting area. Important to note that you can only study forensic science uh, at our Geelong, at our Warm Ponds campus. That's where the facilities are, the kind of groovy crime scene buildings and whatnot. Um, so if you do want to take forensic science, you need to um, attend at Warm Ponds for particular workshops, etc. But in terms of more opportunities, I, I just think I would say that the, the Bachelor of Criminology um, opens up so many broad opportunities already, you know, whether it be, um, as I've already mentioned, working with government, working with non-government organisations, working in the private sector, local councils, all levels of government, all levels of policing agencies. The options are pretty broad anyway. But if you do have a particular bent towards, you know, scientific analysis. Um, I know the students that I teach who study that double degree absolutely adore it. I mean, this is setting you up for crime scene investigation roles, which are always pretty, so you need to be prepared for that. But if that is your area of interest, I would absolutely encourage you um, to think about that double degree, Sylvia. <coughs> Um, another question, what is the practical theory balance in our course? Um, I don't want to take up too much of the stage and I'm not sure if Ian wants to answer that or whether our students have got reflections. Mark, go for your life. I'll, I'll have a go. It's a great question. I think, um, 
one way to to answer that accurately would be to say it depends on the pathway you're most interested in. So we have units that are more theory oriented and others that are more practice oriented and a lot of units which are balanced between the two and mm -hmm. where the purpose of the unit is looking at how theory deeply informs practice. So in a number of our units, there'll be assessments where, for example, you'll be writing a policy options paper or a policy brief where the purpose of that is to reflect on the evidence on a particular criminal justice or criminological issue and offer recommendations off the back of that evidence base. And often what's integral to that is looking at how theories around the way in which criminal justice operates, for example, inform practice. So, for example, in one of the units I've taught into, um, Criminology in Action, the second assessment is, again, a policy options paper where you have to reflect on how can a criminal justice agency that you might be working for best address corruption occurring within the ranks of that organisation. And to do that, you need to you know, look at theories and explanations for corruption and build on those theories and that theoretical basis to offer recommendations for, for best responding to that issue. So it kind of shows that there is this kind of really strong interplay or you know, symbiosis between theory and practice. And you'll see that through a lot of our units. But again, to, to kind of return to that original point, it depends. I mean, if you're like me, really interested in theory, you can kind of tailor your criminology degree to be more theory oriented. If you're like my partner who works within the criminal justice system, works for, you know, um, then you can tailor it towards very practice oriented units. That's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. And a great answer too, Mark, because you're right, it, it does depend. If you want more theory, you can dive down the theory path. Um, and in terms of practical applications, the assessment tasks are very geared towards building um, student skills uh, to perform tasks that, that employers want. So we build the skills in our students' analytical, critical, um, uh, you know, reflective skills. And, and we are constantly keeping in touch with um, various sectors and industries. So we, we have what we call an advisory board that we meet up with a couple of times a year, run our assessment task, pass them, talk to them about what kind of skills and knowledge they want students or their employer, employees, actually, to emerge with. So we're always trying to you know, keep our assessment tasks in particular and our curriculum as kind of practically um, you know, applicable as we can. Um, a good question here for probably Millie and Justin, I think, which is, what do you enjoy the most about your studies, and have you got any advice for people listening in today? I might start with you, Millie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I think I enjoyed most about my studies is kind of the, I think you've touched on it, is the kind of breadth of criminology units we have at Deakin. So I've been able to do everything from, you know, crime and media to, you know, crime and terrorism, which for someone like me, my goal is to work in counterterrorism. So to be able to look into that kind of section of criminology has been fantastic. And also what I've kind of enjoyed about my study is obviously been going through studying while COVID has occurred. Um, so I've enjoyed the fact that not only did I have a great on-campus experience with my lecturers and, you know, being in person and being amongst like all the other students, I still had that experience through the online campus or through the cloud as well. Um, and any advice I would have is probably to involve yourself as much as you can within the campus, within the course and within like with other students as well. Uh, something that I did more so in my law side of my degree is that my first year I actually put out on like our discussion space. So we have like a little discussion board where we can talk to other students, talk to our lecturers, kind of post questions of things we want to like kind of find out. Um, I developed a study group from my first year and five years later we're still meeting up every week and going through the content with each other so really gaining those connections I really I would really advise that for everyone. Thanks Millie. Justin what did you like the most? Ah, oh, great question well 
I agree with everything that Millie says, but as an overall thing, I just think the course content is really fun, I guess. It's really enjoyable. And one of the great things about criminology, it's one of those studies where you don't really do anything in school that can prepare you for it. You sort of got to come in with an open slate. And I think that's the really exciting thing is you're seeing different theories coming up and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Or that's not what I agreed with at the start. So in terms of advice on top of that, like if you're interested in crime, like true crime, interested in watching crime shows and you think this is for you, get into it. That's how I started it. And just come in with an open mind. And as Millie said, I'll just reiterate, get involved, um, get to know your classmates, get to know your tutors and your lecturers. You can send out an email that, that's fine. Just start making those connections and it'll make it really enjoyable. But yeah, it's it's just a great topic. And there's such a wide range of things. As Millie said, you can look into terrorism, you can look into media, you can look into theory. And you can sort of mould one of the good things is with the elective choices, you can mould the way that your career that you want to go in your career. So if you're interested into going into terrorism, you can pick electives that go into terrorism if you're looking at going into sort of a media space you can look at how the media Mm -hmm. interacts you can look at policing and crime prevention if you want to go into a policing role at the end so it's really great in terms of that that you can sort of tailor your own experience to what you want to do at the end so yeah that's that's my experience anyway great thank you to both of you and you know once again you your perspectives are invaluable in this conversation, I think. So we're really, really pleased to have you here to give this advice to people who are listening in. Um, another question for us, and Ian, I might give this one to you, but I can chip in and help out. Do you have criminology postgraduate studies available at Deakin? We certainly do. And there's two pathways into the postgraduate area one is if you have not got an undergraduate degree in criminology you can do a graduate certificate which is a four credit point i think four credit point offering which gives you um several core units that that educate you on key theories associated with the way in which the criminal justice system does and and does uh, often does not work um You also have units on policing. Uh, There's units, uh, there's a unit on environmental uh, crime and there's a unit on on thinking about uh, futures and and outside of the the conventional criminal justice system. So that's the graduate certificate, which is a um, a sort of a mini primer for anyone that has not gone through a criminology degree previously. And that, that could... Um, you could have done a degree um, in any other field or at any other institution, um, and that just gives you the sort of brush-up knowledge to to qualify you to get into a full master's program, which is um, eight credit points over a, a twelve-month period. Or you can you can split that into part time, which a lot of people might do because they've got working commitments and so forth. So they they might not want to study at, at postgraduate level at a full time basis. Um, and the the broader masters of criminology has something that that we build on in our undergraduate program and and Justin's um, evidence of this where after your four or after your three years undergraduate, you can take a research pathway through an honors degree. Um, if you have not had that background in in a previous um, degree, you can pick that background up through the master's offering. So um, master's offers you a, a combination of coursework, but it also can give you um, credit points towards a research project. Um, you can do a minor thesis, which is 10,000 words. You're under the supervision of a staff member that might be or that is generally an expert in the area that you want to look at. Um, You negotiate the topic and you you do some primary research about that. Or you can do a major thesis, which is 20,000 words. And that major thesis might often be the gateway into um, 
into a, a high degree still, which is a, a PhD, which is a, a pure research qualification, which most academics have. But also what we're seeing is we're, a lot of professionals uh, are now, um, you know, engaged in public service work, for example, um, and have doctorates as well. So a doctorate, uh, a PhD, um, will be a, a, an 80,000 word thesis, which is an original research work that makes a significant contribution to, to criminology and criminological knowledge. So, um, so yes, we do have several postgraduate options. Um, the undergraduate program can take you th through into honours and then uh, into into PhD uh, or into a, a master's by research as well, which is a, a sort of a mini PhD uh, that, that takes about half the time. A, a full PhD will take about three and a half years to, to complete. So there's several pathways. And I think the pathways are not only open to people who have just um, come straight out of out of secondary school, but they're, they're open for people that might have been in the workforce for several years and have decided to come back to education because they want to make a career change. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've supervised some really successful PhD students to completion, right, Ian? We've got some PhD graduates working and uh, lecturing at other universities, some of them um, working in industry, and, you know, it's a really fulfilling aspect of our role. And, and many of them also actually end up picking up work while they're doing their PhD. So the, the, the thing to think about, I think, when you, when you go into a master's or a PhD is that there's more flexibility in terms of the options. And so um, it's quite common, for example, that as you're going through even an undergraduate degree, um, you might find and, and get the opportunity to, to take up full-time work as you're studying, in which case we encourage you to do that um, but we also encourage you to continue to, your studies at part-time level. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple of my PhD students started off doing their PhDs full-time and then work fell into their lap from, from however mm -hmm. it, it occurred. Mm -hmm. And you know, my attitude there is you, you'd be silly not to take the work. So we, with the, the key is that the degree is adaptable um, so, you know, we, we organise for those uh, students to go part-time on their research. They're still pursuing their research. It's just done at a different pace. Um, and obviously with the, with the uh, full-time work, it's actually value-adding to their knowledge. So, uh, mm. so the, the flexibility issue, I think, is a really important thing, both in terms of undergraduate and postgraduate study. Mm. Yeah. Now we're almost coming to the end of the time that we have for today, but there's there's just one more question that I might throw out to all of us, but maybe Mark might start with you. If someone wants to enter into policing at state or federal level, is it useful to study criminology? Or you have to unmute, unmute. <laughs> I knew I'd do this. Oh, I look, it's yeah, I was, you have to do it. It's my, <laughs> I knew I'd do it. Um, my answer to, to that was yes, I, I think it is. I think if you want to work in any field within the criminal justice sector, whether that's corrections, mm -hmm. policing, going into policy, mm -hmm. then having a degree within you know, a, a criminology degree is actually really, really important mm -hmm. because you're engaging on a, in a day in, day out basis with these these issues and it's going to provide you with not only the, the kind of practical knowledge about the the systems you're engaging with but also a deeper understanding of mm. of the why question mm. that if you if you lack that it's you're going to kind of have a impoverished experience of yeah of that full stop yeah i'm so glad you said that because i wish it was compulsory personally i think that you know yeah. and increasingly it, 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 and, it, and in certain jurisdictions it is yeah. as well yeah, um that's right. yeah. new zealand i believe recently have introduced a yeah. masters of policing which yeah. is compulsory and i think tasmanian police, police tasmanian police also yeah. are moving in that direction if they haven't already so uh, look i really it's it is one of my favorite topics and one of the questions that often comes up because I know that a lot of people are attracted to criminology because they do want to have that impact and they do want to work 
you know, in a kind of coal face position, whether that be working with offenders in forensics, in policing, whatever it might be, um, there is no doubt in my mind that a criminology degree is going to set you up to be able to ask the right questions, to be able to have the insights that you need, um, and just uh, generally feel more confident about the really quite challenging sector that you, you know, kind of planning to work in. So with that, I'll just have one more little check-in, but I think that that is all the questions um, that we have time to answer today. So I'll just um, thank all of my um, panellists again for being here today and also everyone who has zoomed in, whether you have come from overseas, especially welcome, but whether you're a domestic student thinking about Deakin, Bear in mind, we'll be having sort of other events and whatnot coming up so that you can get a feel for the place. But um, we warmly welcome you and we hope to see you um, studying with us down the track. Mm -hmm.